Hey, let's dive back into history, shall we? This time, we are heading to the rules of Greece. But before we get too deep, let's clear up a quick question. Was ancient Greece a country? Well, actually, no. Ancient Greece wasn't a single country, but a whole civilization made up of city-states. These city-states had common cultural traits, religion, and language, though they had different dialects. Politically, each city-state ran its own show. They often clashed. But when a bigger threat like Persia came knocking, they teed up. Think of it like a bunch of fiercely independent towns that could have set aside their rivalries when it really mattered. Like during the Persian Wars between 492 and 449 BCE. Athens and Sparta were the heavyweights, each extending their influence whenever ruling over the entire Greek world. Now, that we have got that straight, let's take a quick tour through the timeline of Greek history. Beginning with the prehistoric Greece, well, there's a lot here, so we skip that. Beginning with ancient Greece, between 1200 BC and 680. This is the era most people think of when they hear Greece. It is where the myths, legend, wars, and philosophers come from. Here's how it breaks down. Beginning with the Greek Dark Ages, from 1100 to 800 BC. Not as gloomy as it sounds, this was a time of change and transition. Then, the Archaic Period, from 800 to 490 BC. The Greek world starts to take shape, laying the crown for what's to come, and that is the Classical Period, from 490 to 323 BC. The Golden Age, think democracy in Athens, Sparta's warriors, and big names like Socrates. Followed by the Hellenistic Period, between 323 and 146 BC. After Alexander the Great, Greek culture spreads far and wide, and then the Roman Greece, 146 BC, until 324 AD. Greece under Roman rule. It's still a big deal, but with a Roman twist. And speaking of, now the Byzantine Greece, from 324 AD until 1453. Greece becomes part of the Byzantine Empire, a time filled with emperors, Christianity, and epic battles. And there's the Frankish Latin Greece, from 1204 all the way to 1797. Greece under Western European powers, including Venice, a period of complex and shifting control. Then there's the Ottoman Greece, from 453 all the way to 1821. Greece under Ottoman rule, leading up to the Greek Revolution at 1821. And that's where modern Greece starts. From 1821 until the present, Greece as an independent nation still standing strong. So, at its height, Greek civilization wasn't confined to Greece alone. It spread from Egypt all the way to the Hindu Kush mountains in Afghanistan. Even today, traces of Greek heritage can be found in places like Turkey, Italy and beyond. And, of course, most Greeks today live in modern Greece, independent since 1821, and Cyprus. So, in this video, we are going to zoom in on the classic Greece, also known as the Greek Antiquity. Welcome to the Archaic Greece! The Archaic Period, spanning roughly from 800 to 500 BC, was a time of major changes in Greece. The polis, or city-state, emerged as the central political unit, without any powerful states after the collapse of Mycenaean power. Greece's rugged landscape, filled with mountains separating communities, encouraged the rise of these small independent city-states. During this period, some Greek city-states were ruled by tyrants, with Corinth being a notable example, starting in 657 BC. This era also saw Greek colonies popping up around the Mediterranean, like Eubonian settlements in Almina in the east by 800 BC, and in Ischia in the west by 775 BC. Contact with other cultures, especially in the Near East, sparked developments in Greek art, architecture, the adaptation of coinage, and the creation of the Greek alphabet. In Athens, the seeds of democracy were being planted. By the 7th century BC, all male citizens had the right to attend the assembly. After failed coup around 636 BC, Draco established a harsh legal code in 621 BC. But it didn't calm tensions between the rich and poor, so in 594 BC, Zolon introduced reforms aiming to balance power between these groups. Later, in the 6th century, Pisistratus took control as a tyrant, and his son Hippias inherited his position, only to be overthrown by the end of the century, paving the way for Cleisthenes' democratic reforms. In Sparta, 
a unique political system with two kings, a council of elders, and five ephors developed, which tradition credits the legendary lawgiver Eucurvus. Spartals expanded its influence by conquering and subjugating Messenia through the first and second Messenian wars. As the sixth century BC progressed, Greek city-states began forming formal alliances. Sparta, for instance, built the Peloponnesian League, an alliance with cities like Corinth and Elis, who strengthened its position in the region. Other alliances were formed too, like those between Elis and Heraia, and between the Greek colony of Sybaris and its allies. Now, the classical Greece. In 499 BC, the Ionian city-states, then under Persian rule, rose up against their Persian-backed tyrants. With support from Athens and Eritrea, they pushed as far as Sardis, even burning the city before the Persians struck back. The rebellion dragged on until 494 BC, when the Ionians were finally defeated. But the Persians didn't forget that Athens had aided the revolt. In 490 BC, King Darius announced a massive retaliation. Despite being heavily outnumbered, the Athenians, bolstered by the Plataean allies, pulled off a stunning victory at the Battle of Marathon, forcing the Persian fleet to retreat. A decade later, Darius' son, Xerxes, tried again, launching a second invasion. Many city-states in northern and central Greece surrendered without a fight, but 31 others, including Athenian and Sparta, banded together to resist. Meanwhile, Greek Sicily was invaded by the Cartagamian force. In 480 BC, the legendary Battle of Thermopylae saw a small Greek force, led by Brianus Martins. Sounds familiar, doesn't it? Hold off the Persians at a critical pass. Simultaneously, Galen of Syracuse defeated the Carthaginians at the Battle of Himera. The die turned in favor of the Greeks with major victories. Let's see, in the Battle of Salamis and on land in 479 BC at the Battle of Plataea. The alliances against Persia, initially led by Spartan general Pausianus, but later by Athens, pushed the Persians out of the Aegean by 460 BC. However, as Athens' naval power grew, so did its dominance, turning the Delian League into an Athenian Empire. But after a costly defeat in Egypt in 454 BC, and the death of their leader, Cimon, in 450 BC, Athens' campaigns against Persia slowed down. As Persia receded as a threat, tensions between Athens and Sparta heated up. Sparta, very Athenian power founded by the Italian League, began supporting revolts against Athens. In 462 BC, Athens' offer of aid during a spate and hallowed revolt was rebuffed, worsening the relations. The conflict simmered until 431 BC, when the Peloponnesian War broke out, the war dragged on for years, with neither side gaining a decisive edge. A brief peace was negotiated in 421 BC by the Athenian general Nikias, but it didn't last. In 418 BC, Sparta defeated Athens and its allies at the Battle of Mantinea. Athens then launched a disastrous naval expedition to Sicily in 415 BC, which ended in ruin at Syracuse. This emboldened Athenian enemies, and even Persia joined in against Athens. Despite some early successes, Athens was eventually defeated at the Battle of Aigos Potami in 405 BC, leading to the blockade of its harbor. Starved into submission, Athens surrendered, and Sparta imposed an oligarchic regime known as the Thirty Tyrants. However, Spartan dominance was short lived as the Thirty were overthrown within a year. The early 4th century saw major Greek states vying for control, but failing to dominate, leaving a power vacuum. Sparta's attempts to expand led into alliances form against them, including Persia's temporary support. By 371 BC, Thebes had risen to power, defeating Sparta at the Battle of Leuctor, and eventually freeing Messenia, dealing a blow from which Sparta never recovered. Human dominance was also fleeting and by 362 BC, they were weakened after the Battle of Mantinea. This instability allowed Macedon, Philip II, to step in. By 338 BC, Philip had defeated a Greek alliance at the Battle of Chironea and established the League of Corinth, planning to lead an invasion of Persia. Although Philip was assassinated in 336 BC, his son, Alexander the Great, 
took up the mantle, launching its legendary campaign against Persia. By 331 BC, after victorious at Issus and Gaugamela, Alexander had declared himself king of Asia. He continued his conquests into Bactria and India before his untimely death in 323 BC.